Chuck, I got another explainer. What is this so, one? So, so I thought I'd talk about unexpected results. Okay. So this is more just a free association for just what that is in science. I, I don't have a prepared thing to say about All it. All right. So just sort of hang with me. Okay. All right. I like where it's going already. All right. Almost all science that is conducted mm -hmm. in modern times, certainly in the United States, is proposed to a funding source. And then there are your colleagues mm -hmm. that will peer review that proposal. It's a good system. And then cast judgment right. on whether those resources should be allocated for that proposal. As I call it, hate is going to hate, but for a good reason. <laughs> well, that's why you have more than one person. If there's a right. bias in there, yes. you have we have checks and balances right. on what might be a bias. But that's cool, though. Because and if you know in advance that one person is your sworn enemy, right. we put them on a different committee, not on this one. Right. Okay. Right. And you can request that if you yeah, know I mean, that there's... But the, 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 the great thing about that is if you are full of poop, okay, mm -hmm. then it doesn't make a difference because everybody is calling BS on you Correct. at once. Correct. And so that's all that, that's go, it. Go take a walk, take up another right. profession, so, right. come up with another idea. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a wonderful BS meter. Yeah. And by the way, maybe it's not BS. Maybe you genuinely think it's real or it's true. Right. But if you can't get anyone to agree with you, go home. Well, you, then, okay. then now we prove it's BS. <laughs> I don't care so. if you, you know, you can believe your own BS <laughs> and that doesn't make it any less BS. Okay. So we, Chuck should be on these committees. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so that's how that happens. It, recently, we've heard people in the government declare that some research papers were stupid or ridiculous or frivolous. Yes. Keep in mind, they, who know nothing about the science, right. are passing judgment on, on the, a research project right. that was written up, proposed, and approved by a committee right. of other scientists. Of other scientists. When the committee judges that it should be funded, they're not voting on whether it's going to be true. Right. They're voting on whether it's a sensible idea to test. Yeah. It's worthy test of exploration. It. Worthy of exploration. Right. Worthy of further study. Right. Okay. So the money gets allocated. Often it's, in the old days, you get computer money, but- that's so small a fraction of the total cost today. You might need money for a graduate student who will do some work. It might be their thesis project, a postdoc. You need, might need travel money to report on your research at conferences. And so there's a cost to doing the research. If it is well designed, if you don't get the result you look, then the what we call the null result should still be interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah. The most famous null result was Michelson and Morley. They heard that the speed of light might be something interesting to measure. Oh, okay. Why not? Right, yes. The late 1800s, let's do this. This is before relativity, by the way. Oh. All right, so they said, here's Earth orbiting the sun. Let's measure the speed of light with Earth in motion around the sun, and then measure the speed of light opposite our motion around the sun. Hmm. We should get two different numbers. In one case, the speed of light will be the speed of light plus Earth's orbital speed. And in the other case, it'll be the speed of light minus Earth's orbital speed. So they invented the interferometer. Oh. oh my gosh, how useful the interferometer would become. So what you have is you take the waves of light from one beam, wavelength of light, and compare it with another and bring them together. And if they sync up, then the crests add up and the troughs add up so you get a bigger- A bigger wave. Okay, if they exactly don't add up, they'll cancel each other. Right. And anything in between, you get these interference, interference. patterns. So interferometer is checking that, and when you do that, you can make very precise, small measurements of things. They make the measurements, they get the same result, no matter what. Ooh. They got no variation in the speed of light, no matter how, when, or where they measured it. No matter what angle to Earth's orbit, with it, beside it, perpendicular, null result. It became the foundation of relativity. Right. The because speed of light is constant, constant in all reference frames. Right. That's insane. It's completely insane. First of all, here's insane. Let's measure the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> Just to think to do Just that. Just to think to do that. Yeah. It's pretty insane. Okay. And they invented a new technique 
to do it. Because speed of light, to measure it accurately, how are you going to do that? You Chuck, run ahead down the line. Right. To catch, you know, <laughs> Galileo tried it. Did he? Yes. He got a friend of him to go on a mountaintop with a lantern and a little cover for the lantern. Right. And he had a lantern with the cover. And so he, he told him, when you see my lantern open up, then you, you open, open yours. yours. And then we, we try to time this. And he knows the distance between them. And I, I never forget what he wrote. He said something like, the speed of light, if not infinitely fast, it's damn fast. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. No, it's something like, right. I don't know how fast this is, but it's really, well, it's fast. really fast. I can't measure how fast it is. Right. Right. If it's not infinite, it's surely <laughs> very fast. So uh, that interferometric, interferometric measurement of the speed of light unchanging is probably the most famous null result it's a null in result? the history of science. Wow. So a well-designed experiment, you'd want the no result to still be interesting. You're more likely to get funded if the no result triggers other research projects to find out why there was no result. Right. So if okay. you if your question leads to deeper questions, then whether you, or not you're the one, asking, you're the one them, asking or not, you, you, it's good. Right. It's it's a good project right. to do, and that works in any any of the sciences. Okay. Occasionally, you design an experiment and you have certain expectations based on your understanding of what is. You say, I want to perform an experiment to test this result that should come about based on this understanding of what I have of the world. Mm -hmm. And you do the experiment, you get a different result, an unexpected result. That's the best kind. Right. Because not only did your expectations not get fulfilled, that tells you that your assumptions are flawed. Right. The way you see the world down here, you shouldn't see it that exactly. way. Exactly. Right. So now we got to go and adjust the assumptions to account for what you did see. Right. There's nothing more exciting than getting the wrong answer. They say the scientists have their cherished theories about the universe. You know how cherished they are? If someone found something that contradicts it. Done with that. Done with that. Then you're famous right. overnight. Exactly. Over if it's, if it's verified. If it's verified. Right. All right. So the unexpected results force you to rethink the assumptions that went into the experiment you proposed in the first place. Mm. So unexpected results are some of the best results you could ever get from an experiment. And Isaac Asimov knew this. He noted that unlike Archimedes, mm -hmm. who was rumored to have run down the street naked out of his bathtub after discovering the, the buoyancy law of of materials of different density. Right. They said, he ran down the street saying, Eureka. Eureka, right. Okay, Isaac Asimov knows that that's not how this goes down. Right. Okay, the most astonishing thing a scientist can say is not Eureka, but that's odd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's odd. Oh. Exactly. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, We've interviewed Adam Reese. Adam Reese, one of my people, he's a fellow astrophysicist. We occasionally get the Nobel Prize in physics. Mm -hmm. Maybe once a decade, they'll toss us a bone. <laughs> uh, and he's co-discovered the accelerating universe. Uh -huh. The accelerating universe on top of the already expanding universe. Right. And to hear him speak of it, he's just running the equations and his answer was negative for the collapse, the future collapse of the universe. He's, I must have made a, I made a mistake. Made a mistake. Let me go back you and go look back at this again. Check. You check again. What does this mean? And then you get a colleague to check it. Did I make a mistake? Right. That, no, no, that looks no, like no, correct. Looks well, the only way to interpret that, mm. that negative sign, right. is an accelerated expansion. Right. And so then that led to the Nobel Prize discovery of the accelerating universe. Right. Confirmation of the accelerating universe. So unexpected results, which that was, uh, are some of the greatest discoveries, discoveries you can have. we can have. That's amazing. Because it moves the needle on our understanding that led to the original proposal to begin with. That's what makes science so great. And, and one of my predictions that I made, I predicted, based on some rudimentary statistical evidence, that there'd be five times as many galaxies in the universe as was either cataloged or projected at the time, that, that was a prediction. Right. Five times as many. So that got people interested. Well, let's test that. And they got better data, bigger telescopes. There are 10 times as many galaxies right. <laughs> as I had predicted. Exactly. Okay, so I was wrong. 
I got the wrong result, but it's once again, science is standing on the shoulders of others right. where you have a result. It might not be the final result, but it's en route to the result. Collaborative, cumulative efforts. Yes, and more galaxies was the was the takeaway there. Right. There's some galaxies, guys, you know, check, check right. on this. And so now the, the, the number might even be a little higher. We're up to probably a trillion galaxies in the universe. It's insane. But these are examples of scientific results that are not eureka. They're not, oh, oh my gosh, they're just, hmm, I don't understand. Let me right. check it. And if you can reassess the assumptions you make, the, the entire body of knowledge moves forward. Wow. Thereby increasing the area of knowledge thereby also increasing the perimeter of our ignorance. Ooh, there you have it. As it goes out. Yeah, the ignorant part, I'm very well acquainted <laughs> with. <laughs> so there it is. I, just I thought, love I, it. I thought it needed a shout out. I'm uh, unexpected results. It's a good shout out. You know why? Because I think a lot of people have the impression that science is about we're going to do, we're going to have A and we're going to find B. And yeah, we're going to prove We're going to prove B right. with C. Or, right. right. No, it's not no. that. Plus, it's, it's messier than that, right. especially on the frontier right. yeah. where you're checking me, I'm checking you. You move it a little bit this way. But then I think, wait, that's a dead end. But it opened an idea for me that right. I hadn't thought of. Let me try that. Let me try that. And it's this branching yeah. sequence of inquiry because yeah. that's what science that's is. Right. And this is what I love about it and what I like to say to people. Science is more than anything a way of thinking. And a way of querying nature. Right. To arrive at what is objectively true in this world. Absolutely. Objective Ooh. truth. What Object the hell is objective that? Objective truth. Not in America. <laughs> Not in America. <laughs> But take your objective truth and go on back to wherever you came from. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about, Chuck Mike. Just, Chuck just blew a gasket. Mm. Time to end <laughs> <laughs> this explainer on unexpected results. Until next time, keep looking up.